Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about seven cards from Amaket that have gone up in price. And the reason is we are now in the Amaket Pro Tour, which is standard. From this Pro Tour, we can probably see a lot of net decks come. And those net decks will be based on whatever is going to do well and whatever is getting attention. Now the deck doesn't necessarily have to be tier 1 for the prices of the cards to go up. But Wizard of the Coast will generally promote decks that involve Amaket cards because that's the whole po point. The Amaket Pro Tour is the promotional tour promoting Amaket cards. Now before I go too far, I want to say that there is a Nahari contest. I'm going to end it Sunday. Currently, I am at Comic Palooza. I woke up at 5. I'm super tired. came back for a nap. But I believe I have too much Red Bull in my bloodstream to like take a nap and I have to go I have a dinner date later today and then tomorrow I'm back at Comic Palooza slash I'm going to hang out with Austin or the developer friend and do some shopping because I haven't done shopping in some time I haven't done physical shopping in some time and I always enjoy that so the Nahiri contest will end probably Sunday night and then on Monday I will figure out what I want to give for my next contest Probably two cards come to mind. Leovolt is one of them, mainly because as a finance card, he's extremely interesting. Banned in 88s, but went up in price. Anyway, let's talk about some of these cards. I miss New Perspective. New Perspective is in that catchy new cycling deck, right? I'll just leave it at that. I don't feel like, like the deck will go anywhere, but overall, it is a fun deck, and... Wizards of the Coast will promote fun decks. They actually are on record saying that they promote decks that do not, they know will not do well in the later stages because in the later stages, everyone pretty much has the same deck and it gets kind of boring. So they have admitted that in the beginning of the Pro Tours, they promote decks that they know have pretty much no chance of being in the top eight because once you get to the top eight, it's teams, right? And all the teams are playing the same deck. So the next card we're going to talk about is Liliana's Mastery. Love this card. So, so good. Uh, it is absolutely one of the strongest cards. Now I got a text message. <laughs> Come back to Comic Palooza. I'm like, no. And $2.97 makes a lot of... It, it makes a lot of sense to me. It presents a plus one, plus one ability, giving all zombies more power and toughness. And it also produces two 2-2 two, two black creatures. So at any point in time, since it's not legendary, you are going to get value from it. You, you have six power, six toughness among two creatures with a additional creature boost. Very good as a top end for the zombie decks. Next, we're going to talk about OD, but goody, which is A for Work Marvel. This card has been all over the place. It used to be one of the strongest decks, or it used to be the strongest tier one deck in the Emiko builds. But we all know what happens when the deck gets too strong, right? Then the Emiko gets banned. Now they could have banned this card too, which was surprising because I felt like if they banned this card, they could have saved Emiko. Emiko is still very good, but this was kind of the problem. This will continue to be a problem should they print very aggressive and very good cards. The energy, yeah, the energy is, I felt would be difficult initially when I read it, but given how easy energy is to produce in A for Revolt, it's fine. Legendary Artifact, I don't need to really go over the card. Essentially, if you have very strong cards in your library, this is a show and tell version of it for just you. And anytime you can play a card and not pay its casting cost, it's going to be good. But how good it will be depends solely on the other cards in standard. And we have seen some very good cards, very creative builds. Colossus. Now, this is my favorite zombie. I actually shipped one out to Adam in a few lands. So he will get one of these. I shipped them out pre-spike. This card has been spiking pretty hard. It was a 94 cent card, then it went up to a dollar, then it went up to two, then it went up to four, and now it is 450. One of the strongest cards, not because of its first ability, 
So it's nice. I mean, enters the battlefield, it gets plus one, plus one for each zombie in your graveyard. So it might be like a 4-4, four, four, which is not bad for two and a black when you play it on curve. But the real ability is whenever you cast a zombie, you get a zombie. You get a 2-2 two, two zombie. This zombie gets pumped, and creature aggro is doing very well. But now I, I will put a disclaimer. I don't know if the zombie deck is doing well because it's actually going to do well, or it's doing well because Wizards of the Coast wants to promote zombies because it's for casual players. Remember, the promotional tour, the pro tour, the concept is we need to sell more packs, so let's promote these new decks. I feel like the decks that will be in top 8 are Gideons, more Gideons, and more Gideons. But the zombie deck obviously involves a lot of new cards. Talking about an old card that is now seeing play in the zombie decks, Metallic Mimic. Surprisingly good for a zombie. So it's two, you can call it a zombie. So it itself is a zombie. So it will receive a boost from Liliana's Mastery and other zombie effects. And when each other creature you control of that chosen type, zombies comes in play, it gets another plus one, plus one counter. What you're doing is you're building an army of zombies to crush your opponent. And what's really funny here is I'm a cat, which I didn't feel like would be a zombie theme, and in Shadows of Innistrad and Eldritch Moon, which I felt like would have very good zombies, do not. It was like Switch, right? Like the Egyptian themed was a zombie, scary zombie. Ooh, these zombies are getting really big, and there's so many of them. But. Yeah, I mean, finally we have a zombie deck. I mean, it's great, but I didn't expect the zombie deck to be an Amaket. It would have been kind of cool if they made the zombies and Amaket mummies, and then they made, like, mummy cards. I don't know. That's, that's just me, though. I know most of you guys just want to play zombies, and I guess mummies are zombies of some type. But maybe they get, like, a zombie mummy, and then they get additional boosts if they're a mummy type, and they can be embalmed for cheaper. Anyway, this card is very good as a two drop. What the zombie decks really want is they want very good one drops, very good two drops, and very, very good free drops. And they have all of that. The best free drop in standard, actually, is not Gideon or Trials, but Lily from Aldrich Moon. There's also another deck that is coming out, and it's a control deck. It's a control deck. It's very simple. You counter your opponent's spells. Then you draw cards to counter your opponent's spells even more. Counter spells have been incredibly weak as of late, but that doesn't stop pro players from wanting to play them or pushing because there is a certain level of skill. If you are an aggro player, there's skill, but there's not that much of it. You're, you should be attacking at all time. If you're mid-range, you should pick and choose your battle, so there are maybe skills that you have to times that you don't want to attack, but it's not that skill intensive in my opinion. Control decks are highly skill intensive because if you make a mistake, you will set yourself way back in tempo, and it's not like these cards are counterspell, right? It's not like these cards are mana drain. These counterspells are, it's a game of resources. So when I see pro players play this deck, it may be too difficult for a newer player to play. The new player should be playing the zombie deck. But the more advanced player can play the zombie deck and they can also play this deck. For me personally, I always play the aggro deck because when I go to FNM or I want to go to pre-release, I don't want to think about magic, like how mechanics very much. I just want, I want to win and I want to play a fun deck. So that's why I play aggro. But control has done very well so well that a uncommon from this set is two dollars an uncommon blue there is an uncommon white i don't know what cast out i don't know if that's over two dollars or not but at least this card sensor is two dollars so it's one in a blue counter target spell unless this controller pays one which is the force spike it's not as good as mana drain but it does have cycling for one blue so it's a cantrip Blue loves its instant speed one blue cantrips. If you, this has upside. If you view this as a cantrip with upside, then it's very good. 
And that's what the majority of people are using it for because getting an instant into your graveyard got good for delirium. Getting, you know, paying one blue to draw an extra card is very good. And having it be instant speed so you can react to what your opponent is doing is incredible. Overall, one of the better cards in this set is at Uncommon. I'm glad that they printed this at Uncommon. I couldn't see it as a rare, but as an Uncommon, it makes a lot of sense. Anyway, that's it, guys. So contest ending Sunday, tomorrow, probably nighttime. And then leave me a comment of, do you think Leovolt is a good... Would you rather have Leovolt or Gideon's? I don't know. How many Gideon's? Gideon, Ally of Zendikar, I'm talking about. The problem with giving Gideon, Ally of Zendikar, he might rotate out before we get to the next before we get to the next milestone. Uh, so I think Leovolt is kind of interesting because he's not going to rotate out. He's only played in Legacy as a 4 of. And if anything, he's highly uh, trade bait. But maybe we can do something that has more appeal for people who are casual. I do have a foil Dark Rose, Marcella, or Marcella. And I know that card's over $50, so maybe we'll do that one. Anyway, leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.